Welcome back, folks. This contender for the faith. And I'm back with a uh, part five in this conclusion. I've been doing this study series talking about the wisdom of this world. And I'm going to wrap it up with this video here. And, and, and I'll be talking about a few things, people. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, pretty much how, what God, what's acceptable with God and things of that nature there. Now, I mean, the, and, and the Bible does tell the Bible does tell us to, to study, to show ourselves, to prove a, a, a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. OK, people. And, and when you look at when you look at that about studying and so show yourself approved, you, you know, you, you look at what you're going to study. OK, people, you look at that. And, and, and one of the first things that you really get into people for your average Christian believer, you, you, you look at the word of God. OK, the Bible. OK, people, you get you a Bible. OK, that's where you start at. OK, KJV Bible. OK, people. That's where you start. And we have the Bible. Okay. And, and, and I read a scripture and, I, and now that I'm talking, I, and, and I just got to write down a few scriptures before I started this study here video. And I didn't think about this one here, but it, it talk about the word, it, the scripture for talk about the word of God is, is sharper than a two edged sword. And, and, and then go on to talk about, you know, it, it, it's, Proper for doctrine and reproof and things of that nature there. And so even the Bible tell us that, okay, right here in the Bible, tell us we can use these scriptures for all of that. Okay, people, for our learning and things of that nature. There. All we need is the Bible. Okay, people, KJV Bible, that's all you need. You don't have to have and go into other uh, books and different things of that nature there. Okay, people, you, we have the Bible. Okay, and it's stand all by itself. Okay, you see that, people? You look at the screen there, and and, and those cobwebs on it. It's just just saying pretty much, people don't read their Bible like they should. Okay, people, really get into the Bible and read it. I say this, I say it again, said a number of times. The Bible's a never-ending read, and it's a never-ending story. Okay, people, you read, read, read. Okay, people. I mean, and, and I read out of KJV again. I like to repeat that and, and stuff like that. And a lot of time you wonder why so much confusion going on and things of that nature. There are a lot of these guys, one guy reading out of this translation, another guy reading out of that translation. And sometimes you just don't really, you get may get a different interpretation of the scripture that you guys read. Some scriptures are even missing. Okay, people, and you had to go pick up another translation to find to find the scripture that you want to talk about because it may not even be in your translation. Okay, people, it may say something different. Okay, people, and so I mean we we you know we and I'll be looking at a few things again tonight, people. We be looking at stuff, you know, because a lot of time people are carried away by these smooth talkers and different ones like that. I mean you think you you have to sound like you know what you're talking about all the time you got music playing pictures flicking around you know sharp speech and all of that and you come and you need to understand you had the holy spirit people you need to understand that your wisdom uh that you get from god uh when you get that understanding you need from reading the bible is it's, it's the other way around okay people god use those people we not here we're not here to put uh to please men. We're here to please God by by you know uh bringing forth God's word and different things like that, uh making sure he get the glory out of it. Uh I mean the Bible tells us not to think how high, high love ourselves or low. Okay, people, but to be sober minded, okay, people, we be we need to be sober minded. And pretty much you need the Holy Spirit to to keep you sober minded. You can know a few things. You can have some study, then you can have some knowledge up under your belt, but you need to be sober minded with it. Stay with, you know, stay close to the scriptures, okay, people. And again, and, and, and again, this is my conclusion. I'm sure you're gonna see that on the uh, on uh, in the description there, you know, on the title. This will be my part five here, and my conclusion to the study series I've been doing and talking about the wisdom of this world. And I've been wanting, and I've been wanting to talk about something like this for a while, people. 
And like I said, I'm pretty much a simple tune, okay? And I mean, I've been reading my Bible. Okay, people, I've been reading my Bible, you know, and I can say, you know, when I was in school, you know, I wasn't book smart and things like that. You know, I just wasn't one of those people that was, you know, just in the books and stuff like that. Uh, you know, uh, I, I was high, high academic and things like that. Okay, people, uh, it, you know, I feel like once I got saved and, and I got spirit, feel the Lord filled me with the spirit. And I desired the truth, okay, people. I read the Bible. I knew what it's, you know, when I got saved, I read. And I look, I read, and I was confused because I was looking at the church. And then I was, and what I was reading in the Bible, I mean, the church today, and some churches, not all, some churches, uh, I was pretty much confused about, about some things. And I, and I, and I prayed and asked God to give me truth. And, you know, and understanding, because I didn't understand a number of things when I got saved. People still reading the Bible. I didn't understand a number of things and stuff like that. And I wanted some truth. And, and I asked for it. And true or not, God brought across my path and things like that. And I started to grow. And, and you know, my understanding of God's word started to grow and stuff like that. And, and, and I came up, I came up under a Christian woman. Okay, people, she was a Christian woman, woman and stuff like that. Uh, and I pretty much got an idea and understanding how, you know, Christians, you know, we, how Christian women should live, how, you know, Christian men should live. But I had God's word too. Okay. People, we, you know, the Bible is sanctified, you know, we, we sanctified by God's word. Okay. People, we separated, we set apart by reading God's word and, and, and how, and it tells us how to live our lives and things of that nature there. And we be obedient to God's word and we do that. Okay, people. Anyway, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get on into this study here. I got some scriptures I want to start with, and we'll be talking about certain things tonight. We, we I'm, I got a few scriptures talking about wisdom and knowledge, stuff like that. But we'll be looking at a few other things because when you get saved, people, you read your Bible, and you get a, the Holy Spirit will give you an understanding of what you ought to don't allow these people to don't be carried away by what you see out here and things like that. People doing a lot of talking like they really know what they talking about, but they don't have a lot of substance in it. You can read your Bible, folks. Okay, read your Bible <clears throat> and get an idea what we need to be talking about, what we need to be studying, what we what should be our main priorities and things like that. And that's why I call myself contending for the faith. Okay, people, I'm contending for the faith. Okay, the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Okay, and, and along with that, that, that we, we look at God's word, okay, what we have in the Bible. And I'm not the authority on God's word, people, but the, the scripture tell us to earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. And, and that's the everlasting gospel, okay, people, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, things like that, uh, that Christ died for the sins of the world. And we can have forgiveness of sin through him, through shedding his blood for us on the cross and we can have peace with the father and we can be filled with the spirit and there's a number of other things that the gospel bring to us people we have to love forgive and be a giver and things like that and and, and pretty much try to live by you know every word that proceeds about the mouth of god and and really we don't have every word that proceeds about the mouth of god but we have a we have a number of them here in the bible people some 31,200 scriptures that we have uh, in a KJV Bible, okay, people? Anyway, I'm going to get started. I'm talking I'm tonight, and I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to be coming out of Exodus chapter 4, verse 10 through 16. And this is Moses here talking with God. And, and, you, and, get, and you just want to get an idea, people, because a lot of times things are not what they seem. And stuff like that. When we when we look at this world we live in and stuff like that, you may think it's it, you know this is acceptable with God, but a lot of time you you will see otherwise and stuff like that. What's really accepted? You think when you when you see the Lord Jesus Christ, just to give you an idea. And Saul, when you talk about Saul, let's go back when we look at Saul uh, in the Bible that was uh, king. God, knowing him to be king, Saul was tall and stuff like that. And Saul was described as, you know, being, uh, I'm just going to say maybe a handsome guy. He was, you know, tall and handsome and things like that. 
but uh, he disobeyed God and things like that. And for that reason, uh, God rejected him, rejected Saul and anointed David to be king. OK, you listen to me, people now, because things are not what they seem. God anointed David to be king. OK, people. And uh, you never describe if I'm not mistaken, you never you, they never describe how David looked. OK, David was just an average guy. He kept sheep. OK, he was the youngest. OK, people. He, he kept sheep and things like that. And, and true enough, David was a man after God's heart. Okay. Even God said that about David. Okay. That he was after, he was a man after his own heart. Okay. People, and we should be the same way. And a lot of times we can do that by embracing God's word. Okay. And the closest word we're going to get is in this KJV Bible. Okay. People, the KJV Bible. I know we had the 1611, uh, K, uh, Bible, KJV. 1611 back in the day with a lot of Greek and Hebrew and Latin words in it. But uh, God gave us something with a more sure word of prophecy. Okay. And he gave, and we have a, that came out in the 1700s. We have a KJV Bible that, that we've been out for the past 300 some years, people. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, some three, 400 years. And, it, well, you know, my, my, my mathematics can be all. But never mind that. We've been had this KJV Bible around a long time that we read now today, people. And and I've been reading out of it. And I thank God to have something this this close, pretty much to, to some manuscripts and stuff like that's been translated over into English. Okay, people. It's been around a while. Okay, folks. And uh, we have it today. But anyway, let me get started, people. Uh in Exodus chapter. 4 verse 10 through 16. I'm going to give you an idea about a few things, folks. And, and, and let me find it here. And this is Moses talking with God. And Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent. You hear that, people? He's not eloquent, neither here, uh, here for, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. Okay, people. And, and you can see right there, even though Moses came up in Pharaoh's house and, and, and pretty much left Pharaoh's house when he was about 40 years old and stayed, stayed there in the backside of the desert for another 40 years before he even came in into what God had for him. Okay, people. And listen to this again. It said, Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither herefore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech. And of a slow tongue. He said, and the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth, or who have or who make up the dumb or deaf, or or the sin, or the sin, or the blind, have not I the Lord. Okay. Now therefore go and I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. You hear that people? And, and again, we, we can't we you want to get an idea because a lot of time. We look at a lot of people these days. I look at a number of videos. I look at a lot of people preaching. You got a lot of false prophets out there with these slick words and different things like that. And, and they mislead a lot of people, okay, people, with their smooth speeches and different things like that. And I'm going to be talking about that tonight, okay, people. That's what this study about on this last conclusion here. We'll be, you, we we, 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 we want to be able to have that wisdom and knowledge and understanding discernment we need to, 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 and, to and, and demonstrate that in these scriptures here to show you that you cannot let, allow these people with these smooth words and different things like that to mislead you. They not listen to what they, they're not giving you enough. They're not giving you enough substance in what they're saying in a way. They use big words, fancy speech, and things like that, but you're not get you don't get anything out of it. Okay, people, and you need to pay attention to these scriptures that I'm gonna be reading tonight. Talking about that, even Moses was telling God he wasn't a good speaker. His words, he, you, you, you get what I'm saying? And Moses pretty much was educated. Uh, he was, and Moses was educated. He came up in, in, in a Pharaoh's daughter house. Okay, he had the best of everything in, in the education and things like that. Okay, and he still could tell God he wasn't. And pretty much Moses was trying to get out of God sending him also. Okay, people. And, and I can pretty much say myself, I mean, I pretty much knew that I didn't have good English and things of that nature there uh, and stuff like that. But when God is moving 
on you to do something, people. That stuff really don't matter. Okay, you get your Bible and things like that, and you start reading. You got to understand what you ought to be doing. I mean, you go forward with it, and, and in due time, God will bless it. Okay, people, and I, I hadn't stopped yet. And this video right here be video number 77 or 78, I think, in, in this in in my in my ministry here and i had and I'm, let me say this people i had when i started this ministry and some of these first video you go back and look at some of the first videos i did you can listen to me i'm nervous and things like that uh you know i'm you know talking over myself whatever you want to call it and you know and, and it takes some time to get used to people i've never i'm not a big speaker I mean, I don't, I don't like speaking in front of people and stuff like that. I mean, I will if I have to, but I'm just, you know, I'm pretty much, you know, I'm pretty much down to earth, people. I mean, I don't have to be seen and heard, okay, people. I don't, you know, I don't have to draw, I don't like draw a lot of attention to myself and things like that, okay, folk. And I'm just that kind of guy, you know, and I mean, you know, I, I don't prefer a lot of attention. And, but, you know, if you're going, if we're going to be in ministry and things like that, you know, we, we have to open our mouth. God gave us, he done gave us a commission to go out and preach the gospel and different things like that, to teach and tell people. You know, the Bible said they didn't understand among the people share instruct many. So we, we have different ways. Like I have different ways to instruct people at this time now, to just, you know, to get behind a camera and talk. But sooner or later, we'll be out on the streets, people talking to people and things like that. Okay. And, and, and let me keep going. And, and, and I'm doing a lot of talking cause I, I do have a, I don't have, I, you know me, I can go over an hour with some just with about eight or nine scriptures and, and I got more than that anyway, but let me keep going. And, and I'm going to verse 12. It said, now therefore go. And this is God talking to Moses. It said, now therefore go. And I will be with thy mouth. You hear that people and teach thee what thou shalt say. Okay, and pretty much if these guys gonna be talking, they needs to be spread in the word of God. But a lot of time, you look at some of these videos, they do more talking than they give you scriptures. I do more, talk, I do talking and scriptures also, people, and I give you a number of them, okay, people, to get that you you get to compensate for what I'm saying. Yeah, I give you scriptures also, and, and and I'm gonna keep going and. And this is most talking, and, and he said, "Oh my Lord, send I pray thee by thy hand, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send." And and I keep going, saying, "The anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well.' You hear that, people? <laughs> uh, and also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee, and he will, and when he see thee, he will be glad." In his heart, okay? God knows his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth. And I will be with thy mouth. You hear that? And with his mouth. And we teach you what you shall do. Let me say this, people. When Moses was before Pharaoh, a lot of times, you go back and read that. Moses didn't say, Moses, uh, Aaron wasn't doing all the talking, okay, people? Uh, uh, Moses was talking, okay, people? And you can see Moses, Moses pretty much got over there. God was with him. Okay, folk. Uh, uh, God was with Moses, and Moses did all the talking, okay, folk. Moses would did all Moses did all the talking and things like that. Okay, people. Uh but and, and but I, I and I keep going with this. And, and said, And thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth. You hear that, people? And I will teach you what ye shall do, okay? And we had a Bible now. God's teaching on us. He's definitely teaching on me of what to do and say. It don't have anything to do with the speech. It has to do with what I'm saying, okay, people? It has to do with what I'm saying. You need to pay attention when you listen to these guys doing all this, this nice talking and smooth talking things like that. See what they really saying to you, okay? A lot of times you can think they saying something that might fit your narrative, fit what you want to hear, it may not be what you need to hear, thanks to that nature. That you need a little more. You need more substance than uh, what, these guys need to give you more substance than what they're saying. Okay, people tell you what to be aware of. Okay, and I got scripture that I'll show you about that in a minute as I keep going. And, and, and I'm gonna read this last one. I keep going. I know I'm moving kind of slow, doing a lot of talking, and I move kind of slow and say, and he shall be thy spokesman. And talking about Aaron. To Moses, and he shall be thy spokesman unto the people, and he shall be even, and he shall be even, he shall be to thee 
instead of a mouth. You hear that? And thou shalt be to him instead of God. Okay, he gonna tell Moses is gonna tell Abram what to say. And Abram be speaking for him. <laughs> well, you go back and read it later on. And I'm sure it happened and it did. But a lot of time Moses was talking to the people also. Okay, for Moses was talking. He could, I mean, you know, you go read it for yourself. All right, anyway, I'm gonna keep going with I'm going to my next scripture here. And these are really these are, I got these listed as my introduction scriptures. Uh, some just a few things I want to talk about and open up and stuff like that. And, and, and I keep going to Galatians chapter 1, verse 10. And, and it says, and listen, people say, For for do I now persuade men or God, or do or do I seek to please men? You hear that people? But if I yet please men, you hear that folks? I should not be the servant of Christ. Okay, I'm not out here to please men, okay, folks. I'm out here to I'm out here to persuade men, but I'm out here to please God, okay, people. I'm out here to please God, and we do that. Well, yeah, we do that through obedience of the faith and things like that. But we please God by preaching the word like the Bible say, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Okay, we got the word read here before us, okay, people? And I give you a number of scriptures concerning God's word. Okay, that's what I'm doing. I'm being obedient. I'm, I'm giving you a number of scriptures concerning God's word and things like that. And, and, and I move on, people, to Matthew chapter 27. Uh, verse 20, 27 and 31, and we'll change, and I'm gonna change it up a little bit here. And we looking at how God pretty much he 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 brought the foolishness of man really down to nothing and, and really made a show of him, he made a show of him right here. When we go look, get what I'm saying? Take the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, okay, people. Do you know? And you got to understand the first thing in the world uh, is the things that we see, okay, that they think is foolish to them, okay. They they think they so wise, okay. And but let me let me keep going, okay, people. Uh, Matthew chapter twenty seven, verse twenty seven through thirty one. We'll see something here. It said then the soldiers talking about Jesus, okay, people. Said then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus unto the common hall. And gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. You hear that, people? And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And you got to understand. And when you go back and read these scriptures, people, the 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 the, the noise of Jesus, uh, being the, being the Messiah and the King of Israel was in the era in a way. And don't you know they still missed it, people? All they had to do was get the scriptures out and get the prophets out. And go back and look at even the king had an idea himself. Cause he 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 said what he asked the, the, the wise man what what time did the star appear? I mean the star appear appear in the sky. And they look at the prophets and, and see where the, the Messiah would be born at and things like that. So they pretty much had so a lot of them had an idea where he, he would be born and things like that. But see the thing was since since the you know that Jews was on the Roman occupation, he didn't come in as some type of military leader. He came in, you know, humble and things like that as a spiritual leader. But they really wasn't having that. They wanted a more of a military leader, so he didn't come in like that to them. And they pretty much they they missed it, people. They missed it. We can't we can't miss it these days. Okay. Anyway, let me keep going, folks. Said when they had planted a crown of thorns, uh, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed a knee before him and mocked him, saying, "Hail, King of Jew, King of the Jews!" You hear that, people? You see how God take the foolish things of the world and confound the wise? Okay, I uh, said, and they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head, and after they had mocked him, they took the robe off him, from him and put his own raiment on on him and led him away to crucify him i mean i mean this stuff right here people i mean it just is i mean you get a you get an idea how god do things with the wise of this world here he he he, he pretty much he, he he really mock them at the same time okay people and stuff like that and, and the Lord Jesus Christ knew these things were going to happen to him, people. And I'm going to go to Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. 
you can see it here people you can see it right here and this is talking about the lord jesus christ what he did for us it blotting out what said blotting out the handwriting of ordinance that was against us you hear that people which was contrary to us and took it out of the way nailing it to his cross tell my jesus and having spoiled principalities and powers you hear that people he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it and we can see how he did it when these guys mocked him and things like that he pretty i mean really i mean yeah he had to suffer the lord jesus christ had to suffer and be humiliated and things like that but at the same time they crucified their savior people okay and they messiah at the same time really it it, it really it, it, it you know it was really on them okay folks it was really on them and I and I go to I go to uh, Corinthians chapter one verse nineteen. And for it's written, I would destroy the wisdom of the wise. You hear that, people? And would bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. I mean, you had to see that happen right there when they crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. They mocked him, spit on him, put a crown of thorns on his head. They pretty much had absolutely no idea whatsoever what they was doing and 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 pretty much they prayed they paid the price for it okay people even though even though he 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 uh he, he forgave them on the cross they they still didn't get saved okay people <clears throat> and i go to i'm gonna go to uh first corinthians chapter uh three verse 19 and 20 it said, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for this read, he take up the wise in their own craftiness. Okay, and again, the world, and the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. And I've read this so many times. We see it there on the screen right there, people. Um, you know, I have to read it out of the KJV format or translation and things like that. We want to look at it like that. Get your idea. Because I'm, I'm kind of going somewhere with these scriptures here that I'm reading, people. I ain't kind of going somewhere with them by what I'm going to talk about. We, we get an idea because a lot of time you'd be surprised. I'm looking at videos and things like that. I look at a number of video folks and I, I see a lot of guys, you know, got a lot more Bible education and things like that. And I listen to them talk. Okay. That's my guilt. The Bible said that the ill try words. Okay. People. Listen to them, and a lot of time, you know, these guys be talking like they know what they saying, but they 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 be wrong. And I can't. I mean, I'm not just out here. I can't correct everybody. I mean, I mean that ain't for me to do. I'm the, I'm to talk about these things and and just tell the people what to be aware of and stuff like that. Uh, it's not what you. It's not what it seems to be. Okay, people. I, and these days, seem like everybody had their own measure. Bible interpretation of scriptures and things like that, and just a lot of confusion out here. You got people reading out of different translations and things like that. You know what I'm saying, people? You got a lot of this going on. But anyway, Matthew, I'm sorry, Psalms chapter 19, verse 7 said, The Lord of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. You hear that, people? Converting the Lord of the Lord is right here in the Bible, okay, people? I got a Bible in my hand right now. This is the law of the Lord. Okay, here, people. Said the law of the Lord said the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. You hear that, people? You can get saved just by reading the Bible. The testimony of the Lord is sure. We got it right here in the Bible, right here, it's sure. And you just need faith to believe it. And if you believe it, it's sure. Okay, I mean you got no doubt about it happening. Said making wise. You hear that, people? Making wise the simple. Okay, people, you making wise. The simple, and we get it right here in God's word, okay, people? Because we have the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. You read God's word, going to make you wise, okay? But I'm saying read those books over there, okay? You got a lot more wisdom than those books can that, that you can find in those books over there, okay, folks? I'm telling you, and that's why I'm, that's why I'm doing this, this study tonight and some things I'm going to be talking about. We'll be talking about... Uh, you know, speech and, and, and flattery and different things like that. I got a few scriptures I want you to read. Just get your idea so you can have that. So you can use your wisdom through the Holy Spirit. Talking about wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, discernment. And all of those come from the fruit, fruit of the Spirit, people. 
in the gifts of the spirit. Okay, people, you can find it there in, in, in uh, Galatians chapter 5, uh, verse 22, and uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Okay, you go down and read that, find the gifts of the spirit, uh, really the manifestation of the spirit. Okay, people, uh, really consider the same thing. Uh, and 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1 through 5, and I think I got this scripture again. I'm just going to read it now, but I, I got it again in my line up here. And I'm going to read it again, okay, people? It said, it said, and I, brother, when I came to you, and this is Paul talking. I want you to listen to what Paul has to say. And, I, and I've read this before, but I'm bringing it again. It said, and I, it said, and I, brother, when I came to you, came not with excellence of speech or wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. And, and I can't say I come with excellence of speech also, okay, people? That ain't my gift, okay? My gift is to read my Bible. And, and, and God give me understanding what he's calling for and things like that, you know, and stuff like that. It ain't how it ain't how clear and plain your speech is. People listen to your video. They understand what you're saying, people. We just we just so used to and caught up with listening to people with fine speech and stuff like that. But a lot of these guys, these, a lot of I'm not saying all of them, but a lot of these world famous false prophets. I mean, you can definitely the way they put their words together. And the and the psych the psychology they use on the people folk, I mean they can really mislead a lot of people and they do. And I keep going saying, "Our brother, when I came to you, came not with excellence of speech, or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you." And I pretty much feel the same way. Okay, people, call, you know why? Cause I don't have to get into all those books over there. Okay, I don't have to read all of them. So I, if I determined not to know anything among you. Save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Okay, people. And really, we got all these books and stuff like that. We got the Gospels and we got the Old and New Testament. We got a lot more than what Paul had uh, back when he was here. Okay, people. We got a lot more than what Paul had. Okay. And we still shouldn't feel like we know so much because we read, we've read. we been reading the Bible and things like that. We'd be sober-minded. About it. You know the Bible, you read it, you know how, you really supposed to know how to carry yourself and things of that nature. You're not, you know, sometimes you might want to pick on people, or do certain things. You know, you know not to do that, okay? You be wise not to do that, okay? And let me keep going saying, I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. You hear that, people? There it is right there. But in demonstration of the Spirit. In a power, okay, people, and that demonstration of the spirit pretty much. You read God's word, cause the Bible says, "Word is spirit and life." You read God's word. You you handle yourself according to what you read in the Bible, okay, people. God gonna bring these scriptures back to your memories and tell you how to care and things of that nature. There, and that's what that means there. And I go back and read again. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going to my next scripture. It said it said that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, okay, but in the power of God. Well, let me go back up to verse four, people. And I'm 33 minutes, and I, and uh, and I I keep going. Said, and let me go back to verse four here. It said, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. You hear that? This Paul talking. He got four, he got uh, some what 13, 12, 13 books over here, epistles over here, and he can still say, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. But in demonstration of the spirit and a power. And I go down to verse, uh, I go to verse five here. Said that your faith, you hear that people talking about our faith now, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. You hear that people, and you read them books so that you see what he meant. But in the power of God, not read the books, but if you look at the if you look at the uh, titles that you see on those books there, okay, that ain't where you that ain't where your faith should stand, people. Not in the wisdom of man. Man wrote them books over there to the left over there. Okay, that, that Bible is inspired by God. Okay, 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 people. Man, uh, yeah, man wrote it, but he was inspired by God to read it. Okay, he was moved by the Holy Spirit to read that. Even, even those guys that translated that KJV Bible that we had, what that we have today, uh, God moved on those guys to uh translate that book, the Bible, into English. And, and compile it took a num it took it took a number of years or hundreds of years okay people we go back to 1611 okay people and that's some 400 years back some 400 years back and we can we can add another hundred years but to that 
uh, when they started working on those, start compiling those uh, pistols and different things like that uh, to get us a old and new testament people. Okay, to start printing our Bibles and things like that. Again, we have old and new testament today. We have a number of scriptures that we can read. Uh, we have everything at our fingertips, people. I don't get into the apocryphals and all these lost books and things like that. I mean, I don't do, I don't, I don't get into that kind of stuff. Okay, people, that's confusion. Okay, and a lot of us believe, and I'm sure you guys, some of you might believe that those books are not in the Bible. We don't believe they was inspired by God, and we don't waste our time. We're well, just confusion, people. I mean, God gave us, I mean, make it easy for us. These days, just get you a KJV Bible, Old and New Testament in it people and just read okay i mean you don't have to you know i mean uh if god wants you to have his word uh we i mean if god uh god gave us his word here okay he wants us to have it and we gotta have it and let me see, and we have everything we need in a kjb bible okay people we don't have to look outside of that for extra okay people i mean the the masses the the, the, the your believers and different ones around the way you don't have to go find uh, different books to get what God has for we got in this we got in the Bible. I mean, and then it, you you I mean, it takes a lifetime and more just to even understand it all and remember it. You might understand, I might understand scriptures and different things I'm reading, but that stuff, I you know, it goes to the back of my mind, and I, I start on another study and things like that. I may forget some of those scriptures and stuff like that. I had to go back if I'm if I need to brush up. Yeah, I had to go back in my notes, okay, and look at that study concerning the topic. And stuff that topic and look at what I did and stuff like that to get an idea. So, okay, yeah, I got it here anyway. I mean, I keep up with all my notes and stuff like that. When I get through the study, I keep up, put everything together and, and put it up. Anyway, I'm going to keep going, people. Uh, and we talking about, we and, and pretty much, we pretty much talking about, you know, you know, the, you know, kind of exercising wisdom and knowledge, and understanding some discernment to look at how we see things go in the world that we live in and plus in this christian circle that we live in and and what these guys ought to be preaching and teaching to you and, and, and a lot of time it doesn't matter how it how you know how they present it it's pretty much what they are saying okay and how they bringing it what they really are saying okay people god wanted moses to go say thus said the lord and he didn't care really he didn't care how moses would say it okay people uh, but Moses the one complaining about he didn't have uh, good speech and, and things of that nature. That God wasn't worried about that, but Moses had a problem with that. And, and Moses said, Aaron, and God sent Aaron along with Moses. Anyway, I'm going to keep going. For, uh, Psalm chapter 12, verse 2 and 3. And it says, it said, they speak, listen people. <clears throat> it says, they speak vanity, everyone with his neighbor, with flattering lips, and with a double heart do they speak. Okay, you hear that, folks? And I'm going to keep going. It said, the Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speak a proud thing. You hear that, people? And, and it's getting you an idea because we, a lot of time, a lot of these false prophets and different ones like that, they use a lot of flattery to uh, to really get you people and, and and mislead you and throw you off. And and I let, and, and pretty much in my first, in my introduction, I read off a number of meanings to these, to these words like flattery enticing uh knowledge wisdom and understanding i i think i read the definition off for flattery and and things like that enticing i believe i read the definition off give you an idea okay people and i'm going to proverbs chapter one i got a long one here i'm sorry proverbs chapter seven but i want you to see a few things about this one here people and give you an idea uh Talking about this about this lady here, and pretty much you're gonna see how she took it and things like that. And listen up, people, because it's talking to us also, okay, people. Again, anytime Solomon used the term my son, uh, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, so, uh, the Holy Spirit really, that's God talking to us, okay, people. It said, My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. You hear that, people? And we got the commandments of God read right here in the Bible. Okay, people, say, so keep my commandments and live in, in my law as the apple of thy eye. Okay, you hear that, folk? And I keep going, say, bind them upon thy fingers and write them upon the table of thy heart. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister and call understanding. You hear that? Thy kinswoman. That, that they may keep 
D from the strange woman. You hear that, people? From the stranger which flower with her words. Okay, you hear that, people? You hear that? It said for the for the widow of my house, I look through. I'm sorry. For at the window of my house, I look through my casement and be held and be held. I'm sorry, and be held among the, the simple ones. I discern among the youth a young man void of understanding. Okay, and a lot of time, people, if you don't have understanding. You know, you, and I'm telling you, folks, you get it from reading God's word. Okay, people, just as plain as day. You want to understand that you really need to read God's word. Get your KJB Bible and read. You will see a lot of difference in what uh, some of these guys out here that talking and teaching and preaching things like that. You see a big difference in what they saying, what they should be saying, what they shouldn't be saying, what they should be doing, what they shouldn't be doing. You get an idea, okay, people. You get an idea. You won't be, you know, you won't be misled by a lot of these guys out here. Uh, and I keep going. Verse 8 down here. It said, passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way of her house. In the twilight and evening in the black of, in the black and dark night, and behold, that met him a woman with the attire of a harlot and a uh, subtle of heart. Okay, you hear that, people? She was very cunning and crafty, okay, with the way she was carrying herself because she was really out to get. Okay, says she is loud and stubborn and her feet abide not in her house. And we and I see a lot of that today, okay, folks. I see a lot of that today. Okay, people, and I keep going. Say now now is she without I'm sorry, I said now is she without now in the streets and live and wait at every corner. So she called him and kissed him and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me, and this day I have put my vow, I have paid my vows, therefore came I forth to meet thee diligently, to seek thy face, and I have found thee. Okay, you hear that folks? So I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt, I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloe, and cinnamon. Come let us take our fill of love till the morning, let us solace ourselves with loves. For the good man is not at home. He is going on the own journey. He has taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. Now listen to this, people, and pretty much why I read these some 20 scriptures just to get down to here. Because that's this is what I'm talking about tonight, people. Talking about this fa fair speech and flattering words and things like that. And you need to understand, people, this is part of your, like I said, the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. You need that knowledge and understanding, discernment, and wisdom to see some things that you see when you're looking at these videos right here. And like I told you, a lot of time they use what they call sensory stimuli to draw you in also, okay, people, with work, with, with music playing in the background. I mean, I don't get that stuff, people. You got a video, you're talking to people about God's word and, and giving them some knowledge on things. You don't need word. You don't need you don't need music playing, people. I mean, you don't need that stuff. You want to be serious. You want if you want me to take you serious. I mean, leave your music out of it, okay, people. Talk about God's word. Leave your music out. We don't need that. I mean, I don't need to hear it. I mean, stuff like that. Yeah, and I still listen to videos with music in it, but it don't make a lot of sense when you really reading scriptures and you got music playing in the background. Like I told you, that's what they call sensory stimuli. They where they use music, uh, uh, pictures and, and different sounds and sights and things like that to kind of draw you in and things like that. We don't need that, okay, people. You, you, you people do not need that anyway. And, and and let me keep going, folks. And I'm going back down here. He said, with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him, okay, people. And he and drew him in. He said he go up after her straight. Uh, as an ox go up to the slaughter, or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. Okay, people, and we and a lot of people laid away with the flattering lips and fair speech and things like that. And you'd be surprised. And and I'm thinking about folks. I'm thinking about doing a video about false prophets and stuff like that, and give you an idea. I think I said that in, I made a couple of videos back. Okay, people, think about doing it. Let me keep going. It said till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hastens to the snare. And know not that it is for his life. Okay, people. Say, hearken unto me now, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Okay, and it's God talking through by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, people. Say, let not that heart decline to her way, go not straight in her path. For she have cast down many wounded, 
Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Okay. And I got one more here to read. It said, her house is the way to hell, going down to the chamber of death. Okay, people. And, and, and that really happened to those that like that like knowledge and wisdom and understanding and discernment, people. Okay. And we have to see that sometimes you can be carried away with flattering fair speech and flattering lips and things of that nature there. And we see that's what happened to this guy here. And and I, and I keep going in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 7. This and people say, excellent speech becometh not a fool. You hear that, people? But much less do lying lips a prince. Okay, people? And you had to get an idea of what the scripture is telling you. Really saying, a lot, it pretty much a lot of saying, uh, uh, really, if you got fair speech, okay, people? If you got fair speech, a lot of time, if you ain't careful, you, you you may be you may be become uh just what the scriptures say a fool. Okay, people. You you get what I'm saying? You had to have your head on right. Okay, folk. You had to have your head on right and things of that nature there. Uh uh so you don't uh and, and like the scripture said, excellent speech becometh not a fool. Uh but but uh much less do a lion lip a prince. Okay, people, and, and I keep going, I'm gonna keep going past that one now. Uh, I got I got a number of them here I want to read, and I'm 46 minutes in. Hey, okay, folks, and I'm going to Romans chapter 16, uh, verse 17 and 18, people. It said, Now I beseech you, brother, mark them which cause divisions in offenses contrary to the doctrine. You hear that, people, which ye have learned, and avoid them. You hear that, people, telling you right there the use of knowledge and wisdom and understanding and discernment. And you, and according to what you read in the Bible, when you see these guys. Pretty much tell you how to pretty much tell you to stay away from them and listen to their people. It said, For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. You hear that people and by good words, you hear that people in fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. Okay, people. You see that now? I mean it's right there in your face. Okay, people, telling you that you have to be aware of those things also, people, when you listen to people talk and stuff like that. That's pretty much how they get you. Okay, that's pretty much how they get you. And I read that one again. It said, For they that are such, and I go back and said to 17, said, Now I beseech you, brother, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine. You hear that? Contrary to the word of God, which we read here, uh, uh, which ye have learned. You hear that? And avoid them. You hear that, people? And and, and I, verse 18, For they that are such, sir, not our Lord Jesus Christ. You hear that, people? But, but their own belly. And by good word and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. And you know what, people? It, you know, looking at these videos, a lot of these guys on there these days got their hand out for money. Okay, people? Like the Bible said, they're making merchandise out of a lot of these guys and stuff like that. They're going to tell you what they want, what you want to hear. A lot of these guys monetizing their channel. You can, feel, you can say what you want, people. Okay, people? I mean, you can say what you, long, you want. But when you when you making when you monetize your channel and you got PayPal up, you bringing in all kind of money. You pretty much it's it's kind of hard to really just get down off in the people. And I would know I'm pretty much sure you got I can I know that in a measure really to get serious about God's word and tell people some things that's gonna be controversial to them. That's gonna bother them. And and I make it my business to say what I need to say. Okay, people. I mean, you look at my subscribers. I pretty much had them in when I first started this channel. Okay, people, and I pretty much already knew from way back what I wanted to say and talk about, <clears throat> and I knew it wasn't going to be that popular. Okay, people, I knew and I understood from day one I wasn't going to be that popular in this ministry here. I already read the scriptures and talk about a number of things. Okay, folks, I mean, I've been there. I already done that. Okay, people, and stuff like that. I know I wasn't going to be popular with, with these guys. And I'm going to say some stuff. I already said a number of things in some other video and stuff like that. And, and I'm going to keep saying that not just to offend, but the gospel can be offensive when you're trying to tell people how to live and, and different things like that, what they should be doing, what they shouldn't be and all of that. I mean, it's offensive. I mean, I was talking to a guy the other day at the store and, you know, he's pretty much talking about he didn't see nothing wrong with doing it and doing that. And, and he got kind of warm about it. 
And I had already been talking to him about 15, 20 minutes. And he pretty much just saying, I'm, you know, he didn't see them wrong with doing certain things and stuff like that. And, you know, and, and I really couldn't get into it, you know, farther into it with him because we hadn't been out there talking about 20, 25 minutes about a few things. And and, and and people don't really want to hear a lot of what they can't do, okay, people? They want to live their life and do in the way they want to live it and stuff like that. And they don't want much truth. They don't want to hear those words and things like that. And I pretty much read a scripture in the last study that talk about that and stuff like that. But and it, it, I, I don't really have it. Uh, I don't really have it up in my mind which one it will. But anyway, and, and, and I'm going to keep going, people. Uh, going to... Uh, First Corinthians chapter four, verse eighteen through twenty, uh, and it said, "Now some, it said, now some are puffed up, okay, that uh, as though I would not come to you, but I will come to you surely if the Lord will, and will know the speech of them which are puffed up." Uh, uh, said, let me start over. People said, uh, "I'm going to verse 19, Said, "But I will come to you surely if the Lord will, and will know." Not the speech of them, or you hear people which are puffed up, but the power. But God, I mean, Paul pretty much really Paul was saying there that he really was he wasn't concerned about what these guys what they were saying. He wanted to know that the power, I mean, he wanted to know these guys living by the word of God, okay, people. He want he wants to see a demonstration of the spirit. Okay, for that's what he's saying. He said, for the kingdom of God is not in word. You hear that, people? But in power, not what you're doing, not what you're saying, people, is what you're doing, okay, people? It's what you're doing. Like they said, love is an action word, okay, people? And that's one of the fruit of the Spirit there. Love is an action word and things like that. A lot of these things ain't just talk, okay? We have to be doing them, okay, people? That's why he said, for the kingdom of God is not in word, okay, but in power. And that's allowing the Holy Spirit to work in you and through you, people, okay? Uh, and, and I keep going to the next one here. And I mean, I don't have a, yeah, I do have a number, but okay. anyway, looking at Jude chapter 15, verse 16, folks. Uh, and, and, and it says it here, verse 16, verse 15 and 16 says, To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly. You hear that, people? Among them of their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed. In all their hard speeches, you hear that people which ungodly sinners have spoken against him, said that our mamas complaining, walking after their own lust, I said, in their mouth speaking, they mouth speak of great swelling words, having many persons in admiration because of advantage. Okay, you know why people talking about advantage? Because a lot of these guys have studied them books over there and things like that. And again, you can draw away a lot of people with a lot of worldly wisdom and things of that nature there you got advantage on people when you have when you have studied a lot more books you have advantage on them on that on that level there but when it come down to the bible you in a different stuff you you i mean we all on the same playing field okay people like i said that before we all on even playing field because we really spoke to paul told the people one place he said he he would that they all would speak the same Okay, people, so there shouldn't be no division and confusion when it come down to God's word. One people, one person believe it this way, another person believe it that way. No, you got to believe it the way you're supposed to have it. And that's one of the reasons why you need be a KJV Bible, okay, people? You need a KJV Bible so you can uh, get what God has. And, and I'm going to Mark chapter 7, verse 31 through 35, people. <clears throat> uh, Mark chapter 7, verse 1 through 35. Saying, and again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he came unto the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of the capital. Uh, and it's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ here, okay, people? It's talking about the Lord here. Saying, they said, and they bring unto him one that was there. You hear these people? And had an impenitent in his speech. And they beseech him to put his hand upon him. You hear that, people? And, uh, and this is, uh, uh, let, let me go back here. And they took it. Let me see. Let me go to verse 33 here. And said, and he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers in his ears. And he spit in his, and touched his tongue. And this is this is Lord Jesus Christ healing this guy here. Saying he looked and looking up to heaven, he sighed and said unto him, 
uh, ephata, okay, uh, that is to be, that is to be open, and, and that's more like a, that's more like a Greek or a Hebrew word there, people, uh, ephata, that's more like a Greek or a Hebrew word, and it said, and it says right here, that is, be open, and, 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 and let me say this, red people, let me say this, people, a lot of time, uh, they you, you these days these guys get these Hebrew they take these English words and turn them back over into Greek and Hebrew and stuff like that. When the Bible take these same words and turn them in and, and give us the interpretation of what they want us to have, okay, people. So you see these these guys that think they know so much right there. What you can always pick up on show you the opposite of what the Bible always do what the Bible. In the way the Bible doing the people. That's why I call myself, and I and I'm again I'm not saying the perfection, thing like that. But you to have more of a narrow-minded, fundamental approach to God's word. Okay, people, narrow-minded, fundamental approach to the word of God. Okay, people, it's right there in the Bible. It's a lot of people tell me you can tell my God is the same that you know day, yesterday, and forever. Okay. I mean, if that's true, well, his word is the same, okay? I mean, you do it, you, you look at it the way we have it here in the Bible. And you need to understand how to interpret scripture and things like it also, okay, people? Because a lot of people say, well, they were doing it back then. We're doing the same. Well, some things and some things to move on. Because early church was doing a number of things to start the church and stuff like that. And later on, it's definite, it definitely went by faith. Faith alone, okay, people? No signs, no nothing. It's faith alone. Okay, people. Anyway, Mark chapter 7, verse 31 through 35. And we're talking about this guy and his eyes were open. And, and, and I go to verse 35 here and say, and straightway his ears were open and his and the string of his tongue was loose and he spake plain. Okay, you hear that, people? I mean, right there, God uh, used him uh, the way he wanted to use him. Okay, people. Uh, he gave him plain speech. That's what he had. Okay, folk. At, one, at first, he couldn't speak too good and things like that. And there, he opened his ears up and loose his tongue and things like that. And you notice a lot of times, some people that can't hear too good, some people that can't hear too good, they uh, they can't hear too good. They don't they don't talk too good either. They have trouble. They don't have good speech. But he got healed. Okay, people. And I go to my next scripture here, and I think I already read this one again, people. Uh, I already read this, I'm sorry. Uh, and and I, and I won't read this one, people. I won't read this one. I won't read this one here again. I already read it one time. I knew I had it twice, and I just won't read it in a way because I'm, I'm coming up on an hour here. And I got a few of them left. I'm going to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. Uh, and it says here, so it says, seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. Okay, people, that means the guys did not, they did not uh, get away from the simplicity that was in Christ. Okay, people, and I read this again. It says, seeing then that we have such hope, to our mind in the Lord Jesus Christ, okay, in his word, we use great plainness of speech, okay, people? That means it had to come with uh, a lot of big words and things like that. A lot of times using these big words on people, a lot of times people don't know what these words mean, okay, folks? You have to, you have to, when you're using big words and different things uh, and stuff like that, you have to uh, tell the people what some of these words mean because they don't know. And I can't say I do a lot of time, and I'm not ashamed to say that, I can go look it up and find out what it means, but we should use plainness of speech when we're talking to people. But you know why? I mean, why use plainness of speech? Uh, why you? Why not use the big word? I mean, when you're not pretty much not talking about, you're not talking. You're not reading scripture. You're not talking about God's word. And when you, you own something else and stuff like that. But anyway, let me keep going, people. In, in Corinthians, Second Corinthians, chapter ten, verse seven through ten, it said, "Do we?" It said, "Do you look?" On things after the outward appearance, if if any man trusts him to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord have given us, 
for edification and not for our destruction, I should not be ashamed. Okay, people. And I keep going, said that I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters, for his letters say they are weighted and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. You hear that, people? You know what he mean? I mean, pretty much, uh, pretty much Paul was saying right there that this, this talking about the speech there, talking about the speech contemptible. It ain't that he would have, he had, he pretty much sound like me, okay, people? He just, he trying to explain himself and stuff like that. And it might sound like he don't know what he's talking about, okay? So, and at the same time, he knew what he was talking about. He pretty much didn't have plain speech and things like that. And and, and I'll read that one again. It said, for this, for his letters say, uh, are, for his letters say, they, I'm sorry, for his letters say they, uh, weighted and powerful, but his bodily presence, you hear that, people? It, it, it let us talk sound big, okay? And that, and pretty much when we read Paul's letters today, I mean, sound like Paul had good speech and all that, but Paul pretty much saying it, he, he didn't he didn't have fancy words and all that either, and things like that. And uh, I can believe the same way, okay, people? So for his letters say uh, they are weighted and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak. You hear that beat? Bodily presence is weak. And his speech contemptible. And let me say something, people. I, something that I left off. And, and I say this. And I don't think I finished what I was saying. I was talking about Saul. When Saul was called to be king. And Saul was tall. And Bible said he was tall and handsome and things like that. And David was called later on after God rejected Saul. Uh, David was anointed to be king. And David kept his sheep. And, you know, David, you know, never described, if I'm not mistaken, never described, described David how he looked and things like that. Okay, people, David just, I'm pretty sure David, every side probably, uh, you know, and, and I can say David probably was like five, seven, something like that, you know, five, eight, average height, five, nine, I just say five, nine and stuff like that. And never describe David how he looked and stuff like that. And we know the Lord Jesus Christ came through David's line also and stuff like that. And, and, and when David spoke in the song, he, he spoke by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And we see that it, we talked about, it, you see it talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. Even the Holy Spirit spoke through David. And we see the Lord Jesus Christ some of his words there in the song and stuff like that. And when we go look at the book of Isaiah, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, it says there that you know that his that he should have no beauty that we should desire him. Okay, people, that mean the Lord Jesus Christ. If you seen him in a crowd, you wouldn't recognize him. Okay, he's just an average person. Okay, he wouldn't stand out in a crowd. Okay, people for his beauty and things like that. But when you go look at Satan, you, when you when when we look at image of Satan, he's this beautiful character here. Okay, they they they, they portray sometimes he's a, he was a beautiful character. Bible refer to him as being beautiful. Okay, people, and really the, that word beautiful is really ascribed to a woman. Okay, people, so he was had more, but he, you know, I'm, I can't describe him because God created him as a masculine figure, but he was beauty. He had beauty and things like that, and, and pretty much he was beside himself. Uh, and, and, and you know things like that, and, and you know, but the Lord Jesus Christ, when you see him, people, <clears throat> he he's not gonna be this beautiful person that we should that we should desire him and things that his looks and all of that. He's just an average person, and that's how God move again, people. He don't he don't have to have fancy this, fancy that, and all that. God wants you to know your Bible and be and know and at least know what you're talking about. You might. And, you know, and and like myself, I don't have a great or even a good presentation of what I'm doing. I just get it out the best way I can and give you an idea. Maybe you had to listen to the video a couple of times to get to get an understanding of what I'm saying and stuff like that. Okay, people. But a lot of time, your fancy speeches and your flattering words mislead a lot. Can mislead in big words can and mislead a lot of mislead people sometimes. Okay, people. It can mislead people. You want the people, the average people, the simple-minded people. Those are the ones that I'm concerned about. You want them to follow you. These ones think they're so smart because they've been educated and all of that stuff and reading books. Uh, the Bible says ain't many of them called anyway. Not many wise. Okay, uh, called. Okay, people. 
Not many wise are called, okay, people, they so smart. You got to read, they got to read too much in a scripture and stuff like that. It don't take all that. Sometimes you read God's word, you don't have to read so far off any people. I mean, you can explain God's word with, a, with, with another book of it. Go to another scripture. You can explain what you read uh, in God's word with another scripture. That's why I give you so many. And we look at so many different points and stuff like that. If I got two scriptures say the same thing, a lot of times it was by accident. Sometimes I'm going to leave that other one off. In some cases, if I catch it, I'm not going to say I already got this one. I'm not going to use them. But something that's scripture that's saying something different, certain topic that I'm, I'm on, yeah, I'm going to bring that one up, okay? Because we want to look at it from all angles. <clears throat> But anyway, people, uh, and, and I'm going to keep going uh, to my next one here. And uh, in Colossians chapter 4, verse 2 and 6. Two, sorry, Colossians chapter 4, verse 2 through 6. To six it, said, continue, <clears throat> it said, continue in prayer and, and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Okay, people, watching and praying. That's what it's saying. We're all praying also for us that God would open unto us a dual utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds. You hear that, people? If you're saving the Lord Jesus Christ, you're in bonds too, okay, people? With Paul, with, you know, just as Paul would. That I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Okay, you hear that, people? Listen up now. It said, walk in, walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Okay, you hear that, people? Listen, folks. So let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Okay, you hear that, people? And you, if you can, you can answer every man if you you plain this of speech. Okay, folks, you can answer every man according uh, really what you really with what you're saying. Okay, people, but if, if uh, a lot of time I got sometimes I have people come at me, I'm coming on different things. I mean, some of the words they use be so big, people. I'm like, man, I don't really understand what this guy is saying. <laughs> I am serious. I don't need a show. <clears throat> I don't need a show of words. Uh, explain to me what you're saying, okay? You give me a show of words. I mean, you might lose me with all of that, okay, people? And, and like I said, I don't claim to be that smart at all and things like that. That don't stop me from getting my Bible and read and, 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 and just getting a number of scriptures out there and showing people where we should be at, what we should be doing, and things of nature that nature. Anyway, going to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5, and it said, But as we were allowed of God to be to be put in trust with the gospel, you hear that, people? And, and I'm, he put me in trust with the gospel, too. I got the Bible here. Nothing stopping me from reading it, okay, people? And things like that. I'm doing videos. I, I may have two or three views. Or I can have two or three hundred views or two or three thousand. I mean, I, who's to say? Okay, that you know. And let me go against it. But as we were allowed of God to put to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak. You hear that, people? That's what they saying. Not as pleasing men. You hear that, people? But God will try our hearts. Okay, people. And God know really why we him. And I and I go to another one here. And I go down to verse five also. Actually, that's what I had anyway. For neither at any time use we flattering words. You hear that, people, as ye know, nor a cloak of covetousness. Okay, you hear that, people? God is witness. Okay, people? And pretty much not asking for money and, and making merchandise out of the people that never was in my mind from day one to, to ask for anything and, 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 and being, you know, study asking people for money and, and things of that nature there. Okay, people, and I got another one here in Titus chapter 2, verse 1 through 8. Uh, and it says, uh, but speak thou the things which become a sound doctrine. You hear that, people? The things become a sound doctrine. And doctrine is pretty much, you know, you can, you you know when you're dealing with a topic that's sound doctrine because you're going to find the scriptures in a number of places in the Bible. Okay, people, and that's what you go into. You know it's doctrine there. Okay, the resurrection is a doctrine scripture. Okay, and we, we, we Christ talk about it, Paul talk about it, and things of that nature there. Okay, I mean, we see it in number of places. But let me go back and say, but speak out of things which become a sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, meaning be serious, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience, and that you go on operation of the fruit of the Spirit, read there in Galatians 5.22. Okay, people, it's read there. You can go back and read, you'll see it. 
So the aged women likewise that they be in behavior become of holiness, not false accusing, not giving to much wine, teachers of good things. You hear that people that they may teach the young women, see that, to be sober, to love their husband, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keep us at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. And I mean, I, I really could open this up a lot more, but this ain't what I'm reading it for anyway, people. It says, for all things, says, says, in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works and doctrine, showing uncorruptness, uh, gravity, uh, sincerity, okay? Sound speech. You hear that, people, that cannot be condemned, that he that, he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. And, and pretty much you're talking about that sound speech. You know, your sound speech come from people. It comes right here from the Bible. <clears throat> uh, sound doctrine. Okay. And a lot of times that sound doctrine ain't what you saying. How you open up scriptures, what the Bible is saying. Okay, people. That's the final authority in anything we're doing and talking about. Like I tell you, a lot of people talk about, and, and it just, I mean, you know, I'm carried away by a lot of this stuff that I see, folk. I'm carried away by a lot of it. And, and things like that but sound doctrine is pretty much what you get out the bible not what you saying is sound but what god word is saying that's sound doctrine now okay people a lot of time that's that's sound. you can't if i tell you the lord jesus christ died in three days he he rose again you can't talk against that okay people, because it's right there in the bible okay there's no way to condemn me for saying that and so many other words in scripture that we get out the bible and that's what the scripture is telling us also Okay, so it's how we use the speech. It's not, I mean, it's what we're saying. Not how we say it. Okay, people, it's what, what we're saying. Okay, folks. But anyway, I, I wanted to share those scriptures with you in this study here. We're talking about, in this conclusion, uh, we, we, we're we using pretty much what we, we have to use the wisdom to be wise and that, that knowledge and understanding uh, and some discernment in God's word to see, to get an idea of, the things that we see in the Bible here, talking about flat and work, all these flat and words and these fancy speeches and things like that can mislead the simple and ones like they can mislead people. Okay, folks, they can sound good and put music behind and things like that. But what are what what are they really giving you? You discern that, okay, people, so you can stay on the right track. Okay, folks. I mean, and, and again, a lot of time you stay in God's word. Okay, people, you read God's word, you stay there. And reading stuff like that. And, and again, we see the wisdom of this world here. A lot of time, it can be, you can see the foolishness of it, okay, people? You can see the foolishness of it right there, okay? When you look over there at all them books and things like that, you stay in God's word. It didn't put another book, it didn't put any more books over there beside it. Just put the Bible there. We see a picture with a number of books there, and we see the Bible. And the Bible, which is the word of God, outweigh them all. Okay, people. Anyway, I um, want well, thank you for looking at the video and, and the study here. Uh, again, I'm thinking about uh, doing just doing a video talking about false prophets and things like that. I mean, I don't. I, I hope you can put your finger on a number of them, people. I'm hoping you, if you can't point out a number of false prophets, you really need to. You really not reading your Bible, okay, people. You really don't have eyes to see. There's a number of false prophets. I'm talking about. Some of them, the some of the major ones that we see are on on TV and on social media, the ones you see today, all these big names and different ones like that. I mean, these guys ain't real at all, okay, people. These guys are just as fake as they want to be. I mean, these world famous false prophets and different ones like that. Uh, and I'm just gonna do a video. I may do a video just talking about what they're saying or the way they're leading the people and what they're telling them, what they not tell them, and stuff like that. I may be looking at doing a video on that. But anyway, people, uh, thanks for looking at the video. God bless you.